Good morning, fellow zombies. Are we alive yet? Are we awake yet? It's about nearly 6 o'clock. Give about a minute and some odd seconds. September 24th, 2024. It is Tuesday. The we were trying to see if Roseman, California is here. Yeah. So, this morning checking out the feeds again and trying to go on the news to see if there was anything interesting. Well, for me... If I heard anything about the rolling of states, I know they had a a meeting with all the utility company representatives over there, and they got the uh, they got the shaft. They're not getting a shaft to help them out; they're just getting the political rigmarole. And at this point, I don't know what the hell they're going to do. So, what I'm waiting for right now is anything on the news to give me a little bit more clarification, but it's probably going to be repeating the same information what happened last night. There was several hours me meeting in the Rolling Hills with the companies and the, and the city government and then maybe a county official trying to find out what can they do. And they still have no answers. Not even a geologist that the companies or anybody else hired for this one would tell them anything. Except they're going to be shutouts, and there's going to be blockouts, and utilities being pulled out. Basically, they're turning Rancho Palos Verdes Peninsula into a wasteland of sorts. A dead zone, basically, of any utilities out there, because companies don't want to lose their infrastructure. It costs them money. Doesn't ma it doesn't matter about the people that's going to be affected a great deal because it costs money regarding the materials. They're afraid of fires that might happen. So therefore, they're going to be shutting off the power. <laughs> fires that would happen when or if the lines are stretched, bent, the poles are bent in a way where there's going to be short circuits happening. And if the sparks happen to get on any nearby vegetation or on roofs, then it's going to be a fire zone right there. Fire department are going to have a field day navigating some of the areas and streets just to get to the problem. That's if the earth is still, or when the earth is still continuing its online, its ongoing situation. I was, while I was getting myself ready for this morning, I was having an argument with myself over what could have been done, what should have been done, and not geologically either. We're talking about legal aspects. And trust me, guys, I am no expert in any field whatsoever. None. A smattering here, a smattering there, just like anybody else would be if they had learned stuff from different sources, uh, books, maybe taken up an online class or two, or <laughs> talk to people in the field to get some kind of knowledge base. Trust me, this is an area I'm walking blind like everybody else into. So I am... I may be way off base on my observations and on my own critique of the whole situation because it is going to be a situation out there. And how we're going to be able to deal with it is a good question because nobody's got the answer for this one because there is no proper answer for this. And dealing with movement of the earth, um, some people have called it an act of God or maybe a flooding or rain or, or Fires will be an act of God, but insurance companies look at it one way or another. How much of a losing prospect it is, and is there going to be any kind of recoupment one way or another down the road? How is it going to be affecting the, the shareholders? How is it going to be affecting the majors on the, on the board of trustees? How is it going to be affecting the company? How is the company going to be able to survive on this one? Especially when you make your life the company. And you make it the company at this point. 
I'm going to I'm going to throw up not a conspiracy, but a hypothetical. I'm wondering if the town folk of the peninsula and different communities, uh, the residents and the businesses have already decided to do a class action lawsuit. And if they have, if they have done a class action lawsuit, or thinking of it, hopefully there's someone out there that's going to be looking at the dollar signs they could try getting it. And I'm wondering if the civil lawsuit is going to be, is going to be enough. And if they're going to be looking for criminal at this point. Of course, there's going to be heads popping up on this, on this one saying, Criminal? But what laws have we violated? We violated none of the laws out here. So if there wasn't any laws in violation that they know of, then they will probably have the lawsuit in the criminal, uh, actually in the civil courts, and then we'll see what happens. But that's going to take years of recovery, uh, years of litigation on that one. Or the judge just may dismiss it. But if we're not, they're not going to dismiss it and go forward. There's going to be people looking for evidence on both sides to support their claims. And how far back when the, when the peninsula was created did the structural geologists, how far back did they do the research and their best estimates and guesses about the peninsula being stable enough for any private and commercial usage. Did they think at the time with their own opinions it was structurally safe? Was there any slow creep that could have been damaging? Using technology and science that they've learned back in the 60s or 50s compared to now. Okay, you're still going to be asking me, why are you so interested in this? This has nothing to do with Rosamond. It's earth science, and it's everyone's business. The movement of the earth is everyone's business because we live on this rock. We worry about that the rain or the wind is going to kill us. We're worrying about that the flooding or the temperature extremes are going to nail us. But we don't worry about it. The ground underneath us is about to slip and slide away. If we're living on cliffs overlooking the water, do we not understand that erosion takes time? And as long as you've got a little time left to enjoy the view, fine. But people go to, to the edge to enjoy the view. Beyond that, beyond that, what do they do? They worry. They stress themselves out. Are they going to be able to enjoy the viewpoints? I don't know. And right now, all they got left is a view. But they're going to be able to live there. The residents and the businesses still to do businesses there. <laughs> Political gas bagging is not going to help the situation very much. Even if they happen to throw billions of dollars at the situation, how are they going to be able to stop Earth movement of that massive energy level? Give me one second. I'm going to put you on pause. I had to get the coffee. You're going to be asking me, how and why is this so damn important to me? Well, besides scary and being fascinating at the same time, I'm seeing soil creep happening at a rate that would, scare, that would scare the hell out of anybody. That's one thing when you see a rapid land movement after you know, after flooding happening, you see the mudslides happening, but the water going into the water table and then moving the earth, that's showing signs of oversaturation and then we get collapses. It could be months after a rainstorm, and 
when the ground dries up on the outside, but on the inside, it's like dealing with, if you want to look at a food situation here, good looking at Milky Way or type bar. Hardcover candy on the outside, but gooey on the inside. And what happens if that thing was starting to move by itself? Of course, being encapsulated into a nice hard shell, everything's isolated, so it'd be no problem, right? But what happens if it doesn't have the sides necessary to prevent movement and happen to put into a situation like maybe on a gravitational incline like this and forcing the stuff to move and ooze? You'd probably see the hard shell on the outside moving a little bit, but you'd see more of the inside just going... Bleh, bleh. So, that's a way I'm trying to relate to the general public of how they might look at it. We are talking about Earth movement. We're talking about ground. We are thinking about so much of it is, is solid, and yet we don't realize that the Earth has been in, in constant dynamics ever since it was created billions of years ago. And don't give me about this four to 6,000 year shit. We've had it, we've had records of human activity long before then, so don't give me that crap. All I'm saying is regarding the geology of the peninsula is going to be changing a great deal, unless we're talking about. I don't think the state is going to be able to afford the billions, and I don't think the utility companies are going to be willing. To, to put up the billions to stabilize that particular area. They might look at it as a financial write-off. How many people do we have living over there? Maybe about 900,000, roughly. And comparing how much cost that they're paying into the utilities, is that going to be enough to help stabilize the company's losses at this point? And what happens if the uh, people decide to do um, a lawsuit on this one? Try to put us through criminal, but there's nothing to put on criminal. So the only way they can do it is civil. And there, the point's going to have to be proven on the people of just how much loss they're going to be dealing with. But on the other side, if I'm looking at it, how is the company going to be able to prove their records? <laughs> if there was any geologic uh, information back in the 50s and 60s with their science level, and their understanding about the area. Did they have enough knowledge to warn off people not to build in that territory? And did people take it for granted? Or did they not have the information available? Was there not any geologic information until maybe in the 70s? And by that time, you already had establishments. You've already had business establishments. You already had rel uh, residents. So was the knowledge of geology back then compared to now? It's like dealing with kinder, it's like dealing with K through 12 next to college. We got the collegiate level, and yet from now, man, maybe 50 or 100 years from now, we're going to be the K through 12 level. That's how we're looking at the perspective here. But even with that information back then, if there was, and I don't want to put on, I don't want to put this into a conspiracy uh, nut job shit. I really don't. I'm just trying to explore in my head ramifications, what is and what isn't possible. I'm no legal expert of any sort. I am no scientist of any sort, uh, not lettered and not credentialed and anything else of that nor. I'm trying to think of what is possible, what, here's my alarm clock, what is possible, what isn't possible, and what's going to be What's going to help and hurt at this point? This is scary. I don't think I have seen anything of this profound nature except for having volcanic activity. We're talking about a faraway country. We're talking about Iceland. We're talking about Iceland dealing with lost town or two because of uh, earth movement. We're talking about lava tubes getting filled up and blasted out by earth lava. By hot molten magma. 
but the whole country was made out of magma. And they made their tourist attraction based off of that. So now even their own industry is being affected by it. Who are they going to sue? Mother Nature? They already knew it going in. And they tried to make do. They tried to make do. And to deal with it. This is different concerning about Rancho. Because we're not talking about geologic. We're not talking about upheaval here. We are talking about earthquakes happening in the nearby areas of Malibu. That hidden thrust fault, or actually hidden fault lines in there, of uh, earth movement that catches people's attention. Now, is that going to be translated into the Rancho? Well, if there was enough energy moving through the, through the soil itself, and it would have to look at their charts and graphs to see if there was any energy transfer to help out with the movement to make it faster or stall it out. That's something to think about. As I said before, I'm only looking at it from one particular point of view, a layman's point of view. What if? I'm not looking at a scientific point of view with an absolute certainty because in science, there's almost no certainty except for very few theories that keep getting disproved one way or another. We can dispute the law of gravity. Problem is, there's no way for me to generate anti-gravity forces not even with my mind, to negate the law of gravity. So we're stuck with it. Laws of aerodynamics, I can't do that one either. But we are talking about a force of nature. We are talking about, um, we are talking about weathering, we are talking about degradation of soil and of, of uh, land, of material. We are talking about a constant shaping of the ground into the water we're going to be talking about soil and sand that are going to be moved into the water when we have rainstorms when we have wind happening they're picking up pieces of ground they're blowing across across the ground and even the cliff sides they'll be blasting against it but how long has the ocean water been blasting against that coastline? And what did it look like over two or 300 or 400 years ago? Was it the same way? Or had there been movements during that time? The geologists can only guess by looking at the leftover remnants and make their own assumptions on this one. It's the only thing they can do. But how to get rid of the water... That's going to be a lot of resources, a lot of money, and is the bottom line going to be satisfied or not? Is it going to be heading into the red zone too much, where a company can't go come back from it, or the state? Is it going to be economically feasible? And if there's going to be a class action lawsuit going on, it'll be in the civil courts on this one, and it'll be jammed up for a while. So the other question is, what are they going to do about it? I don't know. I don't know. So this is terrifying. And it's going to get worse for them on the peninsula, I think. And there is going to be any kind of stabilization in the ground. They still have the deformation of ground out there to deal with. And... There's going to be threats whether or not if the power grids are going to be maintained, if there's going to be any problem with the water lines and the gas lines out there. They'll be having problems, more problems with the gas lines than electrical than with the water. And they need electric, uh, electricity to move the water through the pumps. The only thing for them to do, and I bet you the, they've already been told about this one time and time again on this one, in every meeting. Relocation, relocation, relocation. You've been situated in a home for a long period of time. You just don't want to leave it because it feels like it's part of you. You made a lot of investment in this roof, under this roof, in the roof.
you made it home. So yeah, it pisses off people that they're helpless about this damn thing. And it pisses them more off because they can't get the help necessary to continue on. There are no laws on the books to protect them on this one. And if they're dead, would the utility companies fight on this one? And where are they going to relocate to? I'm not talking about temporary, we're talking about permanent or long term at this point. And not being able to get your, your memories out of the home. I don't see any possible and, and positive solutions on this. But then again, if there's any hope for the situation, one can only pray.